Hi everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. Today I want to show you how you can do some budgeting segmentation. Now, this is actually a really common requirement I find, especially around budgeting type analysis, but it's actually it's not that easy to do if you're sort of just starting out in Power BI. There's a lot of things that you need to uh, get right. Um, and the part that I want to show here is how you can, after you've developed all of your budgeting analysis, you can then segment, say, the uh, budgeting dimension that you are analyzing, segment them into groups like best performers, okay performers versus worst performers. And you could base it on, say, the difference to budget, so the, the difference to, of your revenue to budget. And then what you can do, what you can do is you can select that group and dive into the reasons why or or understand more as to why that uh, particular store, that particular region, that particular salesperson is performing less than budget. But this is just a way to segment those particular regions in a way that enables you to do that. Now, what we're looking at here is a report. This is one going to be uh, one re report page that we work on uh, during the Enterprise DNA Learning Summit. So uh, this 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 is going to be a three day event, three uh, six six different workshops. This is just going to be one. Now, this is just a breakout from one of those sessions. Okay, this is going to be um, it's going this the the session is going to be all about budgeting, but this one's. Uh, this tutorial is just going to show you the segmentation side of it and how you can create these groups that just don't exist in your data, these uh, but are derived from results in your data. So you know, we didn't know before we had our data what was a best performer, okay performer, worst performer, because that could and that could also change through time, right? So you want dynamics, ca dynamic calculations that work a way that if you say jump to a different time period, then it updates for that particular time period, and then the next time period, and the next time period. So you're always diving in or segmenting. Uh, in this in this particular case, uh, the uh, the key things that you need to focus on, you know, from a budgeting performance. Um, and then being able to visualize it really, really well. Historically, this has just been very, very difficult to, to visualize. Okay, so the key thing with all segmentation, right, is you need to understand the formula combinations or the formula pattern to actually segment your information. Now, I've already derived all of my uh, budgeting measures, okay, and I am not going to recreate it here because I'm going to do. We're going to go over that in, in in totality during the learning summit. So, if you want to um, see all of the, all of it, and, you know, including being able to download this resource, you all you have to do is register. I'll leave a link below in the description. So, so certainly check that out. Definitely want you all to come along. It's a totally free event. You get a hold of um, you know th six live sessions. Get a hold of this resource. You also be able to view replays. So certainly is going to be well worth your time. Now, once we've derived all of our measures, right, um, I'll just quickly go, uh, you know, we've allocated our budgets, we've, um, uh, which is another thing I'm going to go through, by the way, how you can allocate monthly budgets uh, to daily sales. Once we've created, say, our performance to budget, our performance um, to, uh, our percentage performance to of our sales to our budgets, then we want to segment, okay? Now, to do that, to do that, right, to create this segmentation, remember, this does not exist in our data set. We need to create it. We need to actually create a supporting table, which I'll show you what I did. I created a supporting table, like so, of my of performance groups, right? And it's and you see here that I've implemented percentages where I've got my best performers, okay performers, worst performers, and these are the the ranges in which the percentages are going to sit. So if if for instance a a particular re store or region in this case is forty percent or above. Uh, budget their 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 revenues, then I classify them as a best performer. If they are under their budgets at all, then I classify them as a worst performer, uh, and we can then drill into into those particular segment of of, of stores and, and understand what what is going on there. You know, is it some customers aren't purchasing like they used to? Are, are some products not doing well? So all the great stuff. When you can drill into that particular segment, you can get a lot more insight much much quicker. Now, I'm going to, going to show this pattern once, right? And then I'm going to show you how we need to use it over and over and over and over and over and over again. Now, you'll see here that I've got a count of how many are in a particular segment, right? How many are, are worst performers, how many are best performers, and how many are okay performers. Now, if I dive into this formula, this, this is the key pattern here, right? This is the key pattern. 
So let's just walk through what's actually happening. And this is this is actually the same with a lot of segments. This is just the general way that you do segmentation, right? But I think this is a brilliant one because to even get to this point here, we had to do quite a lot um, to get the sales versus budget percentage because we had our budgets, which had a monthly granularity, and we had our sales, which is at a daily granularity. So that's in itself quite um, quite a tough thing to um, to do, and that's that's going to be a big part of what I show during the full session, uh, the full hour long session uh, during the learning summit. But in this case, what we're trying to do is we're segmenting based on our sales to budget, right? So what we need to do is. F uh, for any particular result, we need to uh, evaluate or we need to go and iterate through every single city in this case, right? Okay, so the, and that's what this variable does. It is creating a list of every single city name. And what we're going to do, if we put that inside a filter, we're going to evaluate every single city. We're going to go and calculate up the sales versus budget percentage for every single city and then evaluate what uh, range they sit within, okay? And You'll see here that we have the min uh, part of the range and we have the max part of the range and because of the filter down here we are iterating through every single row to figure out okay well which one which group does it actually sit in what range does it actually sit in and so you see here and it depends on the context that you place it in you'll see here that this particular evaluation is just counting up uh, the um, amount of cities in each of these groups right but then what we can do is we can use the similar pattern you so so this is, this is the key thing this is very very similar and we can jump to sales instead and so you see here that i just clicked over to sales and not really much change other than this part here we're still evaluating the same logic trying to group or segment these particular uh, stores but instead of counting the stores we're actually counting the sales of the stores and that's why you can then utilize it in this sort of visualization where we have our map right and you can then color differently. You can see the sales, right? You can see the sales of all the stores, but they're colored differently based on which performance group they're in, basically. Which performance group um, versus budget they, they are actually in in the current context. And so we can still see sales and then we can click around here and say, okay, well, here, who are our best performers? And you'll see like, where are those, uh, where, where are those um, locations? You know, you'll see here that we actually have a, um, a, a good amount of these down in the sort of Miami region. Um, maybe because you know it's a big city and, and and sales go better down there and then if we go to you know our worst performers you can see those as well oh, I scattered all over the place so really it's hard it's, it's truly hard to know um, in this particular demo data set but um, I just get this drill right but Still, really cool, right? Really cool how you can then segment in these random groups. This, these groups are totally manual. You know, you could put any sort of parameters in there. And these are just ones that I, I made up for, for this demonstration. Now, the other thing to note there is that you see that, that all of the changes that I'm making here by selecting through here, they're actually all changing up the visualizations throughout the rest of this report page. And that's really, really important because of, because you can't go and use your old measures like your, um, you know, your sales measures or your uh, performance versus budget measures. You need to recreate all of those measures so that they can then change based on the selection here. The reason being is that we are selecting, if I just find that table, we are selecting a dimension. We are selecting a dimension inside inside of a supporting table with no relationship to our core model so if we select something inside of here like we do here if we go and use our old measures it will actually do nothing to all the other calculations so what we need to do is we need to change all of our calculations to a different context and when a selection is made here we need to actually then go and recalculate it based on this logic right this segmentation logic so I'm going to round things up there. Now, um, I, I do know that this is a bit of a requirement. Um, I have um, had a number of questions about this on the Enterprise DNA support forum. So, so that's the big reason why I'm incorporating a full session on this into the Learning Summit. Now, um, certainly if you want to uh, uh, register for the Learning Summit, uh, the description, uh, the registration will be in a link below. So, so certainly come along. Um, this breakout part of of the session was just going to be a small part of it i'm obviously going to spend a bit more time around modeling for budgeting um, you'll see here if i just jump to the budgeting table a big part of it um, 
if I find let's see the big part of it is that my uh, budgets are at a month and year level so we obviously need to somehow allocate month and year data uh, to we need to allocate it to uh, a daily time frame so that we can say analyze information say um, you know on a, for, on a cumulative basis um, so on and so forth so lots to go over so it's going to be an hour long session and, and even an hour might not be not might not be enough so i'll do as w well as i can and then ultimately um as uh, with all uh, enterprise dna events you can get, and gain access to the resource and, and really drill in and dig into how things are created okay all the very best um hopefully you like this one um, this is a this is a technique that um will you know uh, hold true through time there'll be many requirements for this down the track so hopefully um, even if you are viewing this video you know in the distant future from the live learning summit uh, you can still get a lot out of the technique or, or how you actually need to implement it in your models okay take care all the best talk to you soon